make a decree that in all the dominion of my kingdom, men are to fear and tremble before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and enduring forever, and his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed and his dominion will be forever. He delivers and rescues and performs signs and wonders in the heaven and on earth, who has also delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Lila to come up here. We're going to do some prayer. And she's going to take over and we're going to pray over different things. And I've asked her to do it for me. I just know God's, we've got his ear. We have worshipped. We have been lovers. We are his bride. And I believe when we pray that he hears what we say. So with that in mind, Lila, come on and let's do warfare. Hasn't this been awesome? You can sit down for just a moment. We're going to begin to bring the banners out and make some declaration and some prayer uh, over these subjects. I know many of you uh, realize, some of you perhaps do not, that part of the birthing of the prayer here at Brownsville had to do with bringing the banners out as a point of focus. They're not icons. They're not something to worship. They're not, they're not for any other purpose except to bring your focus upon that subject. And it's a very visual generation. And I think it's very important for us in this way, you know, if your mind starts to, tra to travel somewhere, you can look at the banner and you can come back on track. Um, there are so many different directions to go this morning. And I'm trying to sort it through my head, too, because uh, I know that this is a powerful time of destiny. And one of the things that I would like to preface it with is uh, for our First Nations people that are here in, uh, from Alaska, I would like you to come forward here to the front. I believe it's extremely important. Do we have our, our Native people here? From the, yes. Amen. Excellent. Hi, how are you? Are you the only one? Just all right, let's bring the, uh, uh, you're, you're native from Alaska? Yeah, uh, here we go. You guys are always so humble. <laughs> I think it's very important today. Uh, it's such a significant time. There is a um, promise keepers meeting that at the barracks, The Lord is stirring the hearts of the Debras. He has awakened us over this weekend. Now the promise keepers, come on, you guys come together a little bit here. Different tribes, different people. Yeah. Yeah. There needs to be a healing in the, uh, in the native community too, huh? Among tribes. Yeah. Go figure. <laughs> um, so they are meeting in Arizona. Arizona is a very significant state. Uh, it has so many, thank you, it has so many different um, uh, native tribes that will be represented there, I'm sure. And in fact, we have something that we pray over all the time as a point of focus, and this is the tribes of the Indian nations. You might be interested in knowing that there's a lot of prayer that goes forth here from Brownsville, because I believe that we need to honor those that are the hosts of the land, shall we say. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I want to share one scripture, and um, it's, it's so powerful, but I believe it's the heart of God for us to understand this. We have people here from all nations, and probably during the intercession we'll be calling different ones of you forth uh, as a representative. You see, this is a visual that is a focus. Amen? And uh, when we can, these, these are sisters, are are a visual focus for us so that we can really get into the heart of what God is doing. Uh, we're believing 
here at Brownsville for um, Hemisphere Revival. Uh, we are placed here in this hemisphere from Alaska all the way to, to the Falklands, and we are believing for the fire and the glory of revival over this entire hemisphere. And uh, that does not, you know, we're not, uh, uh, we're not excluding the other nations, but we live in this land for a particular reason. We've been placed here. And we'll see here in uh, when Paul was addressing the Greeks, I believe it was, um, the men of Athens, actually, about the unknown God. He made a powerful statement there. He said, therefore, the one, this is in Acts, the uh, 17th chapter, and it's the um, 24th verse. God who made the world and everything that's in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed everything, since he gives to all life, breath, all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. Now I believe that where you live, where you are now abiding is no accident. God has placed you in whatever nation, city, region, wherever you are. God has placed you there. He has given you a boundary of authority in, an, in a region. But one of the things that we need to understand is that the entire hemisphere from Alaska all the way down to the Falklands was first occupied by our native people. And God placed them here with the boundaries and the boundaries and the dwelling place. And the land needs to be healed. I know America desperately needs to be healed. And there are things that have occurred in our nation that are going to have to be healed. We can't go any farther than that. And so we're not going to do a repentance meeting or anything like that. We've, we've done repentance meetings till we're repented out. But we just need to have this understanding that there needs to be reconciliation all the way across the line. And with the First Nations people who have, an, and they need to be brought forth into their position in the body of Christ. Because God has put his gifting in the native people. They have eyes to see. They're very prophetic and they have, they have an understanding of spiritual things that the Anglo community does not get into. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying not to take a whole lot of time, but we're trying to give you some understanding of why we need to pray so desperately for what's going on in Arizona. Because this is a time when the barracks are rising up and we need to let the heart of Deborah the love of Deborah that we have been receiving this whole weekend has been a, le a lesson in love. And I believe that God wants us to release his heart into the meeting that they are having. I think it's Phoenix. Is that right? Phoenix. This is a very important meeting. And it is no accident that it, the barracks are gathering together at the same time the Deborahs are, are gathering together. Now the barracks are ready for war, I'm sure. But they need the heart of Deborah and to let the love and the unity and the focus of the cross be the most important thing that goes on and it will knit their hearts together, the barracks, as God is knitting the hearts of the Deborahs. Our First Nation people are a key and I'm sure they'll be a part of what God is doing in Phoenix. And so I want us all to stand. We love you. We love you. And we are praying all the time for you to be given the position, the rightful position. The rightful position in our nation. 
Our nation needs to be healed. Our, our land is cursed because of so many things. We've talked about it this weekend. Whatever, whatever we have allowed to happen has given a precedent for the enemy to be able to wreak havoc. And I think it's so wonderful that we have the representation from Canada and, uh, and Alaska and, and uh, some of the South American states. This is really significant. So what we want to do, we're just <coughs> flying by the seat of our pants. So what we want to do <laughs> is we want to pray, first of all, for there to be unity among our First Nation people. Unity from our first nation. Now, all I have here are the tribes of. Oh, God. Oh, God. Father God, it was you that ordained families. Lord, families were your idea. You bless them. They're so beautiful to you, Jesus. God, we join our hearts, Lord, with these women here and the many others, Lord, all over, Lord, whose husbands and fathers and children are going off. And Father God, we cry out, Lord, that never, like never before, there'd be a movement in the families in this nation, Lord. We pray, God, that families would hit their faces, Lord, hit their knees, Lord, but before we'd be able just to trust in our comforts, Lord, God, I pray that you would restore, you would restore faith and prayer to the home, Lord. And war seems to do that, Father. But Lord, we repent, Lord, of prayerless homes, God. And we ask, Lord, that you would move once again, Lord, in our nation, Lord. That you would restore these families, God. And Lord, we stand in agreement with them, Lord, for all of their relatives, Lord. The, the people being deployed to war, God, we ask for your covering over them now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you are in control, and you are the commander-in-chief, Lord. And we look to you, Almighty God. And Lord, we don't only cry out for our own families, Lord. We cry out for Muslim families, Jesus. We cry out for Jewish families, Lord. We cry out for families all over the world, Father. And we ask, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit, Jesus. That revival would come to the homes, Lord. Father, we ask for an outpouring of your spirit, God. That revival would break out amongst the troops, Lord. Revival would break out, Lord. Lord, we just strategically send in, Lord, plans. Send plans into the military, Lord. Godly men and women, Lord, who will, who will proclaim your truth, Lord, and be fire starters of revival. Lord, we call forth revival, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. We ask for your covering, Lord, for your protection, Lord. We don't even know how to pray, Jesus, but we say, Thy kingdom come, Lord. Thy will be done, Father. We bless you, Jesus. We bless these families, God. We pray for an extra measure of grace now, in Jesus' name. Grace, hope, faith to stand, Lord. Let every eye look to you, Jesus. Every eye to you, Lord. We bless them now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's just take a little bit more time here on this since we don't know what, what he wants us to pray, we pray in the spirit. God, you know the perfect prayer.
your son. What if it was your husband? What if it was your daughter? What if it was your grandchildren or your niece or your nephew? And what if it was, oh, oh, your husband, your wife? God, what if it was a... The last trip to Israel, we were with Palestinian believers, we were with Arab believers, we were with Messianic believers, and it is a it's a life-changing experience. Palestinians, even uh, you know the Muslims, uh, we were given a testimony um, by one of the Palestinian believers who lives in Bethlehem. Actually, it's under curfew, and um, one of her neighbors, who's a Muslim young lady, uh, sought her out because she'd been at her morning prayers. Now, remember, if you've ever been in Israel during Ramadan, it will make it will convict you like you wouldn't believe. Well, any place when they start on the minaret, you know, with uh, calling to prayer. It is such a humbling thing for Christians because I, uh, the first time I was there during Ramadan, I heard these feet like thunder. I was in the old city, heard the feet like thunder running. And I said, my gosh, what is that? Are we having an earthquake? They said, no, they're running to prayer. I was in the 80s and I remember thinking, dear God, if you could only get a hold of the church like that, where we would run to prayer. This young lady had, had her morning prayers and... Um, 
Jesus appeared to her. She didn't know anything about who he was, but she recognized him, and she said he had his hands lifted like that. There was light coming out of his hands and out of his forehead, and she was transfixed, and she sought out this Christian neighbor of hers, said to tell, tell her more. She wanted, she was so, she was so overwhelmed by what she saw that she recognized that it was Yeshua. And so God, you know, he's able to do it with or without us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So there's good reports coming from all over. Thank you. God bless. All right. Heidi's going to pray over catastrophes. Uh, the word this morning was terror and horrors. And there are just some things that are going to happen. And um, these are things known only to God. And this catastrophe banner, it was um, created years ago knowing that there were going to be times, and there are times. Why don't you turn it around this way so that Heidi can see it too? The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows them that trust Him. I just want to say before I start that I understand catastrophe that our revival came when we had the greatest floods in the history of the world and where whole cities were wiped out by floods. And um, whoa, every day we're dealing with catastrophe, dying, famine, starvation. Catastrophe every day and people are seeking the face of God. So we wanna pray whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Shabarabashiri di arabashi. O rabashatarabashoto. O rabashiti arabasi. O shatarabashiti arabashi. Lord, we agree with you, Lord. Shabarabashi. Lord, we say that you are God. We say that you are God, you are God, you are God, you are God, you are God. In the midst of the flood, you are God. In the midst of the fire, you are God. In the midst of the storm, you are God. And Lord, we will proclaim your beauty. We will proclaim who you are in the midst of it all. And Lord Jesus, I pray, Father, for this nation. In the midst of catastrophe, Lord, as Africa, as China, as India, Lord, as North America, whoa, we'll see catastrophe, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that your people who are called by your name will humble themselves and pray, Lord, that you will hear from heaven. Lord, we know you will hear our cry for mercy, oh God, for mercy, oh Lord. We cry out for mercy. We cry out for revival. We cry out, Lord, that as we see darkness cover the earth, Lord, we cry out and we know, Lord, that your glory will cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. And God, oh God, oh God, in the midst of hell, Lord, we would praise you. In the midst of pain, we would praise you. In the midst of famine, we will praise you. In the midst of fire, we will praise you. In the midst of defeat, Lord, we would praise you. In the midst of biological warfare, we would praise you. In the midst of torture, we will praise you. In the midst of martyrdom, Lord, we will praise you. In the midst of every catastrophe that hell in all its fury would throw against your people, we will praise the living God who sits upon the throne, who is worthy, who is glorious, who is powerful. And we will say in the midst of it all, in the midst of starvation, that our God is God and you are good. And we say, Lord, that if we go into the flames and we are burned, Lord, we will worship you. Deliver us if you will deliver us. And take us home if you will take us home. But we will say that you are worthy, 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 keep Jesus. Rababa. And I pray that the hearts of Americans and Canadians will be turned towards you, Lord, like never before.
before. God, oh God, I pray that it won't take catastrophe to turn their eyes to you. But Lord, I pray that if that's what it takes, Lord, whatever it takes, turn people to you. Turn the hearts, turn the hearts of Americans, of Canadians, Lord. Turn the hearts of those who have been rich and well fed to you. Make them desperate for you, as desperate for you as the poor, as desperate for you as the hungry, as desperate for you as those who are dying daily for the gospel, Lord. Make your people desperate in this nation. Lord, they've never known, they've never known, they've never known. They've never seen what China's seen, or India's seen, or Africa's seen. But Lord, those nations have run to you. They've run, they've run to you, Lord. We see nations running in the midst of suffering. Lord, whatever it takes, God, bring this nation to its knees. Bring this nation to its knees. Bring this nation nation to its knees. Bring this 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 nation to its knees. Bring the nation to its knees. Bring your people to their knees. Oh, we cry. Blessed. Bring the nation to our knees. We repent. We cry out for blessing. We say we are wicked. We repent, oh God. We repent, Lord, that you might stay in your hand and catastrophe. Jesus, mercy, 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 mercy. 
proud and you give grace to the humble. Lord, we've been a proud, arrogant nation. We've been a proud, arrogant nation. And we humble ourselves before you, oh God. We humble ourselves before you as a nation, as a people. And we say, Lord, do not resist us, God. Remove pride from us, oh God. We humble ourselves before you. We lay, God, our faces down. Sackcloth, Lord, in ashes, in fasting, in mourning, Lord, as a nation, God. ultimate healer of all things is revival. Healing of the nations is revival. And so Pat's going to come and pray over the revival banner. And we're not just praying for revival in America or in Canada. We're praying for revival worldwide. So all of you that are here from other nations, if you'd like to come stand in front of this, and we're all going to extend our hands toward this banner and pray that you will have revival in your land. Hallelujah. I know we have several nations that identified themselves the other night. Praise God. Welcome. We welcome the nations. Mm, we love the nations. We love the nations. Hallelujah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mozambique's down there, I see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, there's Russia. I see Russia. Ms. Brenda was just saying that 
earlier this week that she had had such a burden to pray for revival to break out where the troops are, wherever they are, that there would be such a strong Christian witness wherever they're gathered, wherever they're living, and that a full-fledged holy revival and harvest would break out. You know, to be revived means to come to life again. And I think, first of all, we should just pray and cry out to God on behalf of, of his church and all the nations, saying, Lord, we're so sorry for losing our life. We're so sorry for becoming dead and lifeless. And so, Lord, we, we just begin to pray right now for, for mercy. Lord, if we were on fire for you, we wouldn't even have to pray for revival. We'd already be alive. And Lord, you said in one of the letters to your churches, you said you think that you're alive, but really you're not. And so, Lord, we cry out to you for life. And we begin to cry out to you, Lord God, that you would revive your church. Begin to pray right now with all your strength for a holiness revival, for a revival of righteousness to fill the nations, that the spirit of revival would visit the nations and gather in hearts unto a righteous king and a righteous God. Come on, lift up your voices, ladies. Lift up your voices. Lord, we ask, Lord God, that the spirit of revival would come and revive us unto righteousness, that you would raise up your holy standards in our midst, that your righteousness and the fear of the Lord would fill the very air we breathe, that the spirit of revival would begin to, to blow through whole entire cities, whole entire nations, streets and avenues and villages and households, Come, Spirit of Revival, revive us, revive us, revive your church, oh God. We're so sorry to even need to ask for revival, Lord God, but we are in a place of desperation right now. We are in a place of need. We are in a place where we desperately need your life to come and fill us. Come, Spirit of Revival. Fill your church and then release us into the harvest fields of the earth. Lord, we pray for the harvest fields to be filled with revived laborers from your church. That we be thrust out into the harvest fields to the poor, to the needy, to the broken, to the lost. Lord God, that there would be many who volunteer freely in the day of your power. Hey! that the walls of the church would come down and those who know you would be, be, be released in masses out to reach the lost at any cost. Oh Lord, the revival fire, revival fires hit the nations of the earth, hit the nations where the Islamic worshipers, the Muslim worshipers, just even in the midst of their prayer times, that they would be hit with the fire of God the God of glory, the fire of your love, the fire of your passionate love for them. Lord God, the revival fires would hit, hit the um, Hindu communities and the Sikhs and the Buddhists and the atheists, Woo! the humanists, the materialists. Lord, every nation, fires of revival. Oh Lord, make your ministers flames of fire. Make your, your people flames of fire. May there be revival in the workplaces, revival in the schools, revival in the hospitals, revival in government offices. Revival! 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we want the fire. We want the winds of revival, too. Winds of revival come and blow. Come and blow. Holy Spirit, come and blow. Bring refreshment to the nations. Holy, 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 holy winds with miracles, signs and wonders. We loot the miracles, the signs and the wonders. We loot the miracles, the signs and the wonders to the glory, to the glory of the name of Jesus Christ. Let's revive on finance. 
billions released for the kingdom of God. Billions released for the glory of God to bring in the harvest. Woo! Revival finance. Revival finance. Bring it in, Lord. Release it. Dispatch it to the poor, to the needy. All the gold and all the silver is yours, Lord God. Oh, fill this house with your glory. Fill your church with your glory in these latter days that you might be magnified.